Hi, I'm Rick Steves, and it's Christmas time in Europe. From manger scenes to mistletoe, from Norway to Rome, we're celebrating all over the continent. Bon Natale, Fröhliche Weihnachten, Joya Noel, Merry Christmas, and thanks for joining us. In Melting Pot America, Christmas is celebrated year after year with traditions that came over on the boat with our ancestors. In this holiday special, we're traveling back to the old country, to places of rich variety and deep roots. We'll explore the history behind our much-loved traditions. Joining friends and families across Europe, we'll discover a Christmas that's both familiar and different. England is filled with voices singing in the season. The short days around the solstice bring Norwegians out to celebrate the light of Christmas. Families, friends, and food are the centerpiece of the French Noel. An angelic Christmas presence fills Germany and Austria with magical wonder. Italy reveals the sacred nature of the season from its countryside to its holiest shrines. Nature, in all its wintry glory, seems to shout out the joy of the season in Switzerland. And everywhere, Christmas is celebrated with family, including my own, as together, Europe remembers the quiet night that that holiest family came to be. While each European culture gives Christmas its own special twist, they all follow the same story of how the Son of God was born on Earth, as told in the Bible, and illustrated over the centuries by great artists. The Christmas story begins with the Annunciation. An angel sent from God with a message for a young woman whose name was Mary. And the angel said, Fear not, for thou shalt bring forth a son, and you will name him Jesus. And he shall be called the Son of the Most High, and his kingdom will have no end. And it came to pass that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And Joseph, a carpenter from Nazareth, went to Bethlehem to be taxed with Mary, who was expecting a child. And while they were there, she brought forth her firstborn son and laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. In that region there were shepherds, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord came to them and said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you is born on this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was a multitude of angels proclaiming, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to all. And the shepherds said, Let us go to Bethlehem, where they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now after Jesus was born, there also came wise men, and the glorious star which they saw in the east went before them. Guiding them, it stood over where the child was. The wise men knelt down and worshipped the child, giving him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The long-awaited Messiah had arrived. This is the story that Christians have celebrated through the ages. We don't really know on which day Jesus was born. Historians argue it was likely in the spring, as shepherds were tending their flocks. But in the fourth century, a pope declared December 25th to be the official birthday of Jesus. Why that day? Well, Christianity was newly legal in the Roman Empire, and the clever pope figured it would be smart if the biggest Christian festival coincided with the biggest pagan one, winter solstice. And throughout the land, people, Christians celebrating the birth of the sun and pagans celebrating the return of the sun have been rejoicing ever since.
For scenes straight out of a box of old-fashioned Christmas cards, we head to England, to the city of Bath. Here in the heart of the old town, near the magnificent medieval abbey, Bath hosts an annual Christmas market. Carols are a deeply ingrained part of the English Christmas tradition. The custom goes back to Shakespeare's day. Today, young and old sing their way through the season. Here, the Bath Abbey Choir of Boys and Men are performing a carol concert by candlelight. As is the case just about anywhere, it's in the countryside that families celebrate Christmas in the most down-to-earth style. My friends, Maddie and Paul and their kids, Theo and Layla, are looking for a living tree, which they'll decorate and then plant at home. About the right size? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Brilliant. I like it. It's a new twist on an old tradition, with a wink to the nature-worshipping pagans who once haunted these parts. Decorating with greens goes back to the Druids who adorned their temples with swags of evergreen. For pagans, living greens in the dead of winter represented the persistence of life. And for Christians, evergreens are a reminder of the gift of everlasting life. During this hectic season, getting together to bake Christmas goodies while the little ones decorate edible ornaments is a fine way for busy mums to enjoy some time together. Maddie's recipe for mince pies harkens back to the days of Henry VIII. Back then, the dried fruits, spices, and shredded meat for the filling were so expensive that only the wealthy could afford to make a mince pie. According to tradition, 12 pies should be eaten during the 12 days of Christmas to ensure good luck each month of the coming year. But it's the Christmas pudding that's the real centerpiece of a traditional English holiday meal. Like a lot of us, Maddie and Paul are opting for a simpler, less commercial style of Christmas, and that's reflected in their family traditions. Little Theo's and Layla's wouldn't always have been so involved in the family activities. Childhood as we know it really began in 19th century England with the new middle class. And at Christmas, those stern Victorians gave themselves permission to indulge their children. The English tradition of caroling starts very young. We're visiting Theo's school as the students take center stage at the 14th century village church for a very special Christmas concert.
Christmas is drawing near, and tonight these lucky kids are taking a train through the woods to meet Santa, or as the English know him, Father Christmas. Come on in now, now come on in and stand just there, and you stand just there, you come across there, that's right, and tell me your names. Now, what's your name? Dylan. Hello, and what's your name? Kate. And what's your name? Jack. Oh, well done. Now then, now then, most important, what do you want for Christmas? I don't know. Just some surprises. I'm very good at surprises. And what do you want? Well, I haven't written my list down yet. Haven't you? So we're going to wait for your list, and when it comes, I'll be ready for it. Now, are you going to do something for me? Are you going to leave me something out on Christmas Eve? Yes. What are you going to leave me? Uh, Mixed pies and well, wine. Well done. And are you going to leave a carrot for the reindeer? Yeah, yes. Well done. We'll check back with Theo and Layla on Christmas Eve. You. And what was your name, darling? Kate. And something special. While children on their best behavior ask Santa for the toy of their dreams, my wish right now is a chance to hear one of the finest chamber choirs in England, the 16, filling a church with timeless sounds of the season. Leaving the tranquility of the English countryside behind, London offers Christmas fun fit for a queen and streets twinkling with joy. There's magic in the air, or is that snow? Here in Trafalgar Square, in the heart of the city, a winter wonderland has been created just for the day. It's a lovely snowy day, isn't it? Father Christmas has dropped by for the wintry fun, and London's town crier is in fine form as he passes out mince pies and holiday cheer. Nearby at Somerset House, once a grand palace, the courtyard has been transformed into an ice skating rink, elegant enough to make a commoner feel like royalty. At Covent Garden, shoppers can find classic toys for tots at Benjamin Pollock's famous toy shop, in business since the 1880s. The joy and peace of the Christmas season bring both people and countries together. This giant spruce, a gift from the citizens of Oslo, is a reminder of the friendship forged between Britain and Norway during World War II. And Norway is where we're headed next. Here in small-town Norway, Christmas is celebrated with a unique intimacy and a Scandinavian flair for community. We're in Drobak, about an hour south of Oslo. While it's Norway's self-proclaimed capital of Christmas, Drobuk feels like any idyllic town on a fjord. 
It's Santa Lucia Day, December 13th, one of the darkest days of winter and an important part of the Scandinavian Christmas season. All over Nordic Europe, little candle-bearing Santa Lucias are bringing light to the middle of winter and the promise of the return of summer. These processions are led by a young Lucia wearing a crown of lights. This home has housed widows and seniors for over 200 years. And today, the kindergartners are bringing on the light in more ways than one. The children have baked the traditional Santa Lucia saffron buns, the same ones these seniors baked when they were kindergartners. Taking their cue from Santa Lucia, Norwegians, cozy in their homes, brighten their long, dark winters with lots of candles, white lights, you'll never see a colored one, and lots of greenery. In Norway, as in the rest of Europe, pagan symbols, like the evergreen tree, survive disguised as Christmas traditions. The same's true with this sprig of mistletoe. In Scandinavia, it's associated with the Viking goddess of love. For Celtic people, it was a sacred plant. They used it to heal the sick and enhance fertility. For most of us, it's just a handy excuse to steal a little Christmas kiss. <laughs> the Norwegian spirit of Christmas extends even to the departed. Candles flicker in graveyards as families remember lost loved ones. And all over Norway, communities gather together in churches just like this, as choirs cap Santa Lucia Day with a concert. And as the congregation follows the Santa Lucias out, more light of Christmas spills into this little fjordside community. A common theme across cultures is a legendary gift giver, not always fat and jolly, who kids butter up with treats. While I grew up leaving Santa Claus milk and cookies by the fireplace, the kids here leave a bowl of porridge out by the barn for the Yulanisa. These mischievous elves from the forest visit each Christmas not on reindeer, but with a horse, pig, and mouse entourage and a bag of gifts. Every good child knows the Yulanissa is coming with an exciting reward. Just up the fjord, Norway's capital, Oslo, celebrates Christmas with a more urban charm. Streets are decorated. Locals not ready to rely on the Yulanissa are out shopping. And good cheer is abundant. Christmas in Oslo feels low-key. You'll find it best not on the streets or in the malls, but in the homes with friends, and in music. Youthful voices fill the city's oldest church. The old Acker Church, which dates back to the 12th century, hosts the Norwegian Girls' Choir for an Advent concert. Oh, 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 oh,
We'll check back with the Santa Lucias and the Ulanissa later. And while Norway awaits the return of the sun, further south, Paris creates its own light. Paris is nicknamed Europe's city of light for its incandescent energy and effervescent culture. In the dark of winter, the city's best-loved icon, the Eiffel Tower, brilliantly heralds this happy season. By night, Paris's biggest department stores dress up the streets. Printemps is pretty in pink. And the Galerie Lafayette has woven an exquisite embroidery of lights. And all along the Champs-Élysées, it's a festive forest of 2,000 twinkling trees. By day, the signs of Christmas are more subtle, but can be found everywhere. The best-dressed trees are seen here, in the Pompidou Center. Where else but in Paris will you find avant-garde Christmas trees making a fashion statement? With visions of Versace dancing in their heads, inspired fashionistas can bundle up their wish lists and head to the designer boutiques on the Rue Royale. Christmas in Paris is elegantly understated, and the city yields unexpected moments. Turn a corner and you just might find yourself in a stylish arcade, all wrapped up in red. Busy Parisian shoppers fuel up on the city's street food. Steamy crepes. And hot roasted chestnuts. Joyeux Noël! And neighborhood brasseries are full of friends, slurping fresh oysters rushed in from the Brittany coast. Oysters are favorites at Christmas, which makes perfect sense as they're plump and delicious this time of year. Tis also the season of elegant edibles. Foie gras. A pâté made from goose liver and a smidge of cognac is especially popular during holidays. And chocolate shops and patisseries, wonderful any time of year, get even better at Christmas. There are chocolate chestnuts, yummy yule logs, and delights fit for a king. Even sophisticated Paris rolls out the magic carpet for children. French families from all over the country rendezvous at the windows of the grand department stores. Displays are specially designed to enchant the little ones. And stools provided by thoughtful stores make sure that even the tiniest tot enjoys a good view. During Christmas, the Eiffel Tower becomes the highest ice skating rink in Paris. Kids ride ponies at Luxembourg Gardens. And the city's magical Ménage de Noël, the carousels of Christmas, spin memories. A clear, cold day brings out Parisians trying to soak up as much sunlight as possible on these, the shortest days of the year, while a dusting of snow brings out hopes for a white Christmas, like at home. Whether you're young or just young at heart, Christmas in Paris is the stuff of dreams. If Paris is a grand dame strutting her Christmas finery, then Burgundy, where we're heading next, is her pious country cousin. Burgundy lies in the quiet, religious heart of this mostly secular nation. France's most venerable abbeys are here, and their spirit seems to animate the small villages throughout the region. Ancient traditions survive comfortably here. This 13th century abbey resonates with the rich sounds of the French group Fanima, singing medieval carols just as they were sung centuries ago.
A sense of community runs strong in rural France, and it expresses itself in simple rituals shared by families and friends. In Burgundy, no one goes without. Communities take good care of one another year-round with special treats at Christmas. This amiable village mayor, accompanied by her entourage, gets into the spirit of things by delivering baskets of delicacies to the elderly for the Christmas Eve feast. This morning, my friends, the Bertolutes, are shopping for seasonal fare at the Saturday market. <laughs> Fine foods at the center of life in Burgundy, even in the dead of winter. Right about now, the truffles are at their pungent best. <laughs> Delphine and Emmanuel prepare for the grandest culinary event of the year. The French call their Christmas Eve feast La Réveillon de Noël. On peut prendre une petite tranche, on va prendre une petite tranche. At home, the family is busy preparing for the big event. The children are decorating candles to set on the windowsill on Christmas Eve to light up the dark on that night so filled with anticipation. And the tree's not quite done until capped with a star. In the kitchen, Delphine slices her foie gras, then devotes herself to the centerpiece of the Revion, filet of beef wrapped in brioche. Stretching the pastry is a two-person job. After generously grating local truffles, the beef is tenderly wrapped and ready for the oven. And there's still the serious business of selecting the perfect wine from the cellar. Soon guests will be arriving. This time of year, when the days are short and the nights are long, it's customary to leave a welcoming light in the window. We'll be back when dinner's ready. But first, we've got some shopping to do in Germany. When it comes to traditional holiday images, Germany's Bavaria is the heartland. Here, we'll savor classic holiday themes, glittering trees, old-time carols, and colorful Christmas markets. These markets, called Christkindle markets, enliven squares throughout Germany. The most famous is here in Nuremberg. It's a festive swirl of the heartwarming sights, sounds, and smells of Christmas. Along a center of toy making in Germany, a woody and traditional ambiance prevails. Nutcrackers are characters of authority, uniformed, strong jawed, and able to crack the tough nuts. Smokers, with their fragrant incense wafting, feature common folk like this village toy maker. Prune people, with their fig body, walnut head, and prune limbs, are dolled up in Bavarian folk costumes. And hovering above it all is the golden Rausch Angel, an icon of Christmas in Nuremberg. Rausch is the sound of wind blowing through its wings. It's a favorite for capping family Christmas trees. Bakeries crank out old-fashioned gingerbread, the Lebkuchen Nuremberg, using the original 17th century recipe. Back then, Nuremberg was the gingerbread capital of the world, and its love affair with gingerbread lives on. Shoppers can also munch the famous Nuremberg Bratwurst, skinny as your little finger. And sip hot spiced wine. As in so many cultures, kids love their local version of Santa Claus. While Santa is a legend, his character is based on Saint Nicholas, a kind and generous bishop who actually lived in Turkey in the fourth century. Holiday gift giving, especially in Catholic regions, is often associated with the feast day of Saint Nicholas, December 6. But Germany is Luther country. 
Back in the early 1500s, the great reformer Martin Luther wanted to humanize the Christmas story by shifting the focus away from the saints and back onto the birthday boy, Jesus. Rather than jolly old Saint Nick bringing the goodies on December 6th, Luther established the idea that gifts would be given on the 25th by the Christ child, or in German, Christkind. Gibt's auch gut? But for kids, it was hard to imagine the little baby in the manger delivering gifts. So an angel served as the gift-giving Christ child. And somehow, the angel came to be represented by a young girl. She spends her reign spreading the joy of the season. The Christkind concludes by telling the enthralled children, if you're very, very gentle, you can touch my wings. Nuremberg's favorite angel then leads her fans into the children's section of the market, where expertly bundled kids enjoy a Christmas wonderland. Now we cross the border into Austria, to the town that to me always feels like Christmas, Salzburg. With its old town gathered under its formidable castle, Salzburg celebrates the holidays with an alpine elegance. Christmassy shopping lanes delight browsers. Markets are busy as shoppers gather last-minute holiday decorations and, perhaps, a fresh sprig of mistletoe. These Tyrolians celebrate the season in noisier fashions as well. From the castle ramparts high above town, traditional gunners fire away as they have since the days when they really believed these shots would scare away evil spirits. Salzburg, nicknamed the Rome of the North, has a magnificent cathedral, inspired by St. Peter's at the Vatican. Locals here in the town of Mozart pack the place to mix worship with glorious music. It was here, in the region of Salzburg, that the most loved carol of the Christmas season, Silent Night, was sung for the first time, nearly 200 years ago. According to legend, a local priest went out one Christmas night to bless a newborn baby. As he walked home in the snow, he was so moved by the stillness of the starlit and holy night that he wrote a poem about it. He gave the poem to Franz Gruber, the organist in his church, who composed a simple tune. On Christmas Eve, 1818, the carol was sung for the first time, accompanied only by a guitar. Austria is one of Europe's more traditional corners. Its strong Catholicism and a love of heritage shine especially brightly at Christmas time in the countryside. We're visiting the Weissacher family farm. Frohe Weihnachten. Okay. This family happily shares its love of the season with a guest. Like just about anywhere, part of Christmas is making cookies with Grandma. More unique to Austria, 
is this ritual in which the dad blesses the home with incense as his daughter follows with holy water. The prayer is for a healthy and happy new year. Maria teaches her daughters how the Advent wreath marks the four weeks of Advent, the season of preparation leading to the advent or arrival of Jesus. Ancient peoples were the first wreath makers. For Christians, that evergreen circle came to symbolize everlasting life. The candles, one for each week, reminded them that the birth of their Savior was approaching. Austrians lovingly decorate their tree, but keep it secret and hidden from the children until December 24th arrives. We'll check back a little later to see what Christmas brings. From here in the Alps, we journey to a grand city that was the capital of the Western world on that first Christmas 2,000 years ago and remains a leading city in Christendom today. Rome. This is home of the Vatican City, headquarters of the Roman Catholic Church and some of Europe's most sacred Christmas traditions. For centuries, pilgrims have hiked from all over Christendom to this great city. Domes and ancient obelisks still serve as markers lacing together relics and sacred stops, including the tomb of St. Peter, marked by the greatest dome anywhere. And through the ages, pilgrims have stopped here at the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore. The faithful believe the original planks from Jesus' crib are in this ornate container. And here, in the capital of Catholicism, each Christmas, lovingly constructed manger scenes called Presepi pop up all over town. St. Francis of Assisi is credited with assembling the first manger scene in 1223. He used it as a tool to teach people the story of the first Christmas. Since then, in the creative teaching style of St. Francis, manger scenes often put Bethlehem in a local context. Instead of the Middle East, Italians have long set the Holy Family right here, in Italian settings. St. Francis knew that by putting Jesus in a place people would recognize, their own neighborhood, the faithful could relate more easily to the story of his birth. and Persepi range from the very traditional to the very surprising, like this one that imagines the nativity in an Eskimo village. The ultimate manger scene is back on Rome's ultimate square. St. Peter's is where the Pope celebrates midnight mass each Christmas Eve. For Roman families, there are more than just manger scenes to see. For centuries, this lively square, Piazza Navona, has hosted a boisterous village-like holiday market that stays busy until Epiphany in January. The Christmas season in Europe stretches for well over a month, not to maximize shopping days, but to fit in the season's many holy days. Advent starts four Sundays before Christmas Eve. Then comes the Feast of St. Nicholas on December 6th. St. Lucia Day is on the 13th, and Europeans don't wrap things up on the 25th. The 12 days of Christmas stretch from the 25th through January 6th. That's Epiphany, the day the three kings finally delivered the gifts. In Italy, on Epiphany, La Bufana, a popular Christmas witch, flies over the rooftops, filling children's stocking with candy or coal. Between visiting their manger scenes and Christmas witches, many Italians are shopping for their big Christmas Eve dinner. When it comes to a festa, Italians like to buy fresh and local, and lucky Romans enjoy an abundance of farmers' markets. La Vigilia, the traditional Christmas Eve dinner, calls for all the trimmings. Here in Rome, that's lots of veggies and a nice big female eel. As anywhere, Christmas in Rome is a time of giving. The spirit of charity is especially alive in this neighborhood, which has come together for a special holiday meal. At the church of Santa Maria in Trastevere, tables have replaced pews, and the poor are enjoying a feast prepared and served by the community. It's a joyful occasion, 
and by all accounts, those doing the giving feel as blessed as those they feed. Outside of Rome, in villages in regions such as Tuscany, Christmas celebrations are a little more rustic. The festivities, while low-key, are memorable. During a busy season that sometimes feels overwhelming, village life can be refreshingly simple. These jovial friends are playing an old game. The idea is to toss the pan forte, the local fruitcake, close to the edge of the table without having it slide off. No, 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 no. These children are flip-flopping the gift-giving tradition. They're delivering another Christmas treat, panettone, a rich brioche made with raisins and citrus, to older folks who have no family nearby. While providing a bright spot in this grandma's day, the child experiences the joy of giving. And today, the children have another important errand. It's time to post their letters to Babbo Natale, the Italian version of Santa Claus. This special mailbox mysteriously appears each Christmas. Sacred music and prayer infuse this tranquil landscape. Here at the 15th century Abbey of Monte Oliveto Maggiore, reclusive monks celebrate their faith in a timeless fashion, as if one with the communities they serve. And in this town, the people are doing a dress rehearsal for a presepio vivente, or living nativity. On Christmas Eve, in this simple cloister, they'll recreate the town of Bethlehem on that holiest of nights. In the countryside, you'll appreciate how sacred traditions have deep roots. Here in this medieval Tuscan hill town, villagers stack neat pyramids of wood for great bonfires. The lighting of the fires is a signal to villagers dressed as shepherds to come and sing old carols. It's a reminder that through the ages, Italy's humble shepherds entertained the faithful as they gathered by fires to warm themselves and await the arrival of Christmas. Well, Italy has the rich history, magnificent manger scenes, and grand churches. The spirit of Christmas can be experienced everywhere in Europe. High in Switzerland, where the churches are small and villages huddle below towering peaks, the mighty Alps seem to shout the glory of God. Up here, Christmas fills a wintry wonderland with good cheer. In these villages, traditions are strong. Warmth is a priority. Ovens are small, so wood is too. My family has arrived for a Swiss Alps Christmas. Along with our kids, Andy and Jackie, my wife Anne has joined me here in the tiny village of Gimmelbach. 
where we're having some fun with our friends, Ollie and Maria, and their kids. Ollie's taking us high above his village on a quest to find and cut the perfect Christmas tree. What do you think? I like your line, Ollie. Yeah, this is a good tree. I think we should cut it. Still high above Gimmelwald, we're stopping in a hut for a little fondue. We've got the tree. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was quite a bit of work. Mm. This feels just right in the winter, oh, doesn't so it? Good. When it's cold outside, you know, it's perfect. <laughs> Fiku Gaggle means um, fondue is good, ukita kuti luna. And it, it's, um, it means in English, um, fondue is delicious and gives a good mood. So if you have a party, you know that it's going to be... Yes, everybody knows what Fiku Gaggle means. If there's Yes. If fondue, it'll be a good ambience. Yes. <laughs> it's impossible not to linger in this cozy setting. Before we know it, the light outside begins to fade. Here's to happy Christmas. Yeah. Woo. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. As the sun sets, we've got our tree and take an unforgettable ride home to Gimmelval. Back in the village, the kids take the tree home, and we've been invited to enjoy another Christmas tradition. While I grew up opening windows on a paper advent calendar, up here, the windows are real. Twenty-five homes decorate a window for each day of advent. The sense of anticipation is the same as day by day Christmas approaches. Advent is all about anticipation. And for the kids, much of that anticipation is about presents, rewards for being not naughty, but nice. And as we've seen throughout Europe, each culture seems to have its own version of Santa Claus, who serves parents by providing children incentives for good behavior. Here in the Alps, it's Sami Klaus, that Swiss German for Saint Nicholas, and his sidekick, Smoochli. My son, Andy, is playing Sami Klaus this year. Ollie's son, Sven, is playing Smoochly, and the donkey is playing himself. Each year, Gimmelwald's children anticipate a visit from this dynamic Christmas duo. Sami Klaus surprises the children and checks in his ledger to see if they've been doing their chores. Have you been feeding the cows lately? Then he might ask for a song or a poem. Sing. What would you like to sing? Kick me dein in Segen, ein in jedes Haus. Geht auf allen Wege, mit uns ein und aus. And the performance is always followed by a treat oh, from good. his big bag of gifts. Well, Hello. hope you have a Merry Christmas. Frohe Weihnachten. See you next year. Adia. Bye. <laughs> Mission accomplished, and it's time for dinner. Back home, Grandma and Grandpa have joined the gang as we settle into a classic Swiss Christmas Eve. After dinner, both our families gather in the living room. Lighting the candles is a treat our children will always remember. Can 
geschah zur Zeit, dass Virenius Three generations come together as Grandpa reads from the old family Bible. Jedermann ging, dass er sich schätzen ließe, ein jeglicher in seine Stadt. Da machte sich auch auf Josef aus Galiläa, aus der Stadt Nazareth, in das jüdische Land, zur Stadt David, die da heißt Bethlehem. The evenings capped off with the sharing of gifts. Christmas Eve is finally here. And right about now, all across Europe, our friends are celebrating this long-anticipated night in their own unique ways. Down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. In England, the family snuggles together, anticipating the arrival of Father Christmas. He's a little old driver, so light. Up in Norway, they're joining hands in song. In Burgundy, a toast starts the Réveillon. And Delphine's beef is finally done. In Austria, the children discover what their grandparents have been hiding from them. Final touches are made to the Bethlehem being created in Tuscany. And at the Vatican, people pack St. Peter's as millions around the world share a sacred and glorious midnight mass. And as Christmas Day dawns, a joyful chorus heralds the birth of Jesus. Happy Christmas. Joyeux Noël. Noël. Johnny Vienachte. Buon Natale a tutti. Goyel. Merry Christmas. Frohe Weihnachten. Joyeux Noël. Happy Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Frohe Weihnachten. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas.